Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2011 Infiniti FX50 S. Up front is a 5.0 liter V8 and down below is a seven speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this year FX50 for one main reason. And that is the fact that last summer I drove another FX50, but there are a couple points in that video that I missed that I would like to talk about today, as well as you guys loved that car. It had such a niche following. And so I am here to bring you more FX50 content. But before we get on to anything else, I have a website, zachpradle.com, where you can buy stickers and other merchandise when it becomes available. You can also submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me through a quick and easy submission form, and you would get a video of your car just like this one. And you could read my behind the scenes blog to see what I'm filming before it comes out on the channel. But let's get back to that five liter V8 under the hood. That's what makes this car so special. Well, first of all, it produces 390 horsepower, which is an absolutely amazing number for an SUV like this. Sport SUVs in the mid 2000s became a segment. And so a couple of brands started trying things. That's where we got the first gen Cayenne. That's where we got the Grand Cherokee SRT8. Well, Infiniti wanted to get in on that game. So they threw a five liter into their FX chassis. But this isn't just any 5 liter V8. This is the only road car that gets this engine, the FX50 and then the QX70 right at the beginning of its life cycle. Now I mentioned road car. That is because this engine was originally developed for Infiniti's LMP3 race car. That's right. LMP3 is a endurance race class that races at Le Mans as well as other tracks. But Infiniti in the early 2010s was really getting into motorsport. They were sponsoring an F1 team red bull where sebastian vettel won his four titles they were also trying to get into the endurance racing series with the lmp3 cars and they developed this engine for that now things didn't really pan out in lmp3 and since infinity has sort of pulled back their reins on their involvement in motorsport but that's where this engine was derived from and i think that that's a really really cool story and something so special and so unique about this car now you could get the fx with other engines i've reviewed an fx 37 which was a 3.7 liter v6 but this is the almighty v8 Wow, that really, that really feels rich. That's got a good bite to it. And that's one main thing I wanted to make clear in this video because the last video I drove was out in Seattle, Washington. I wasn't familiar with the area and I couldn't really find a good place to really let the car run. Well, I'm back home. I can let a car run. I know the spots to do it in. And that, that was really, really impressive. That really piques my interest. That was good. That was very good. Now, like I said, Paradu, it is a seven speed automatic transmission. I've always liked this transmission. I think it's a little ahead of its time. 2011 for a seven speed and not a Mercedes was kind of high praise. And I really, really like that. Other than that, I don't really have any qualms. Last but not least about the drivetrain, it is all wheel drive and the sport package, which is the S at the end of FX 50 S means that this gets rear passive steering. So to help out with the handling of this car, Infinity gave it passive rear steering, which means that the rear wheels can turn up to three degrees to help with cornering and the agility of the car. Now, Infinity them themselves will tell you one degree. However, independent studies have shown that it's actually up to three degrees of steering in the rear, which is really, really nice. And one of the few cars to get that, we don't really see much of that, especially in the 2011 era. The actual driving experience of this car is great. You definitely notice that low end torque around town. That's the really, really nice thing about the V8. But the sound, well, the sound is great. Outside of the driving experience though is the ride quality because it is on big 21 inch wheels to fit the bigger brakes for the fx50 it is a little bit harder of a ride you just have less sidewall to deal with however it's par for the course for a vehicle like this but 
just something to note. With that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have four gauges and a screen. Off to the left is my coolant temperature and tachometer. And then off to the right is my speedometer and fuel. I also do get a little information gauge in the center. It's finished in this red light. Kind of flimsy feeling. However, I can cycle through a couple different things if I would like to to get more information on my FX50S. On the steering wheel on the left, I have my source, scroll, back, volume, and phone options. And off to the right, I have my cruise control options. The overall look and feel of the steering wheel is pretty sporty. I do like that a lot. And I think it's aged pretty well for 143,000 miles. Off to the left, I do have a climate control vent, as well as my power mirror switches, which also fold, tailgate button, tailgate toggle on and off, traction control on and off, and then my insert for the key in case the key battery dies. Moving on to the door, I have my memory seat options, as well as my lock and unlock and power windows, as well as this nice wood accent you'll find in the upper trim FXs. Moving into the center, I do have a Bose speaker up top, very, very nice. And then I have the typical Infinity infotainment system. This is a 2011, so it is very dated by modern standards, but I can't really fault it too much. One thing I really do like is the fact that it has a 360 camera, which again, for 2011, very high praise. Then I have all the buttons and selectors for that center screen. I really, really like this. I love physical buttons in cars. A little screen and physical buttons seems to be the winning ticket for me, and I really like how it's all laid out. Then I do get my analog clock. I love seeing this in Infinity products. I think it's a really, really nice touch and something you don't see in lesser vehicles. Surrounding that clock are the radio options, of course, CD player, and I have six different favorites. And then I have my climate controls, fan speed, of course, dual zone, which is fantastic, auto, all the bells and whistles. Then I do get a little ashtray and cigarette lighter, and then the shifter itself. The shifter is pretty standard across Infinity's lineup. You're gonna see this in a lot of different vehicles from this era, especially the G35s and G37s. Here's a G35 sedan I drove in Texas in October, and you can see very obviously the same shifter. But down below that, we have a couple interesting buttons. So I do have heated and ventilated seats, absolutely love that ventilated seats are such a nice feature again especially for 2011 but then i have my snow mode which will basically up the traction control help you get a little bit better grip and then i have my suspension setting so i can leave it in auto or i can move it down to sport suspension this is going to tighten things up a little bit and give you a little bit better agility in the corners basically this button makes car turn more better then i do have cup holders so we will do a big freaking bottle test here in the infinity fx 50 s and just like the FX37 and the previous FX50, it does in fact pass the big friggin' bottle test. I am very happy to report. <laughs> then I do get an openable center console, nothing crazy there, and then the seats. The seats are nice and comfortable. I've spent a lot of time in seats like this, not only in this car, but in the FX37 I went on a road trip in. And I really, really like them. They hug you pretty well. They are more aggressive than you would find in a regular SUV. Again, speaking towards that sportiness of the car. And they do have Infinity stitched in them. It's just that nice extra little touch that I really, really love to see in Infinity products. But speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2011 Infinity FX 50S and a couple of things to note. First of all, knee room, good, headroom, good. I've spent a lot of time in the back seats of these cars. They're fine, they're comfortable. It's whatever. I do want to note, I think I missed this in the last video, that these seats do recline. The second row does recline. You just have to use the handles that you would use to fold them down. You can actually adjust them and fold them back, which is a really, really nice feature that a lot of SUVs overlook. So I did want to point that out. I get vents and a 12 volt outlet down below, as well as this really nice infinity stitching down on the floor. I do get a center console as well with two cup holders and some storage inside. But other than that, nothing too crazy. You're gonna get a nice SUV experience back here, but also it does have accents and feelings kind of like a sedan. I think the FX chassis is a really, really good mixture of the Infiniti G products, the G35s, G37s, but taller and bigger. Really, really like that. But speaking of big spaces, let's hop around back. We'll take a quick look at the trunk and cargo space, and then we'll talk about the looks. All right, so we're on the back of the FX50S. Come back here, power tailgate, and it opens up nice like that. It's a little slow, but that's okay. So am I. Back here, we will find the Infinity First Aid Kit. 
I always find these really fascinating to see what you've got in there. Nissan Infinity contents, things like that. This is the stuff that you don't really see anymore. But I do have a 12 volt outlet and a little light back here. I get this really nice privacy cover, really, really like that. And then I can pull this up and you do get the spare tire, jack, toe strap, all of that stuff. Really, really nice. The backspace of the FX50 is really, really nice. The FX chassis as a whole is very, very spacious. Again, if you're between this or an Infinity G, get this in terms of space. This absolutely blows it out of the water. And come up here, power tailgate right back down. Now we gotta talk about the looks and this has an additional factory optioned appearance package. So it has a little bit more aggressive lips down at the bottom and I love the midnight blue color. It is so rare. This has to be the first Infinity that I've driven in blue. You just don't see much of them. It's a lot of muted grays, silvers, blacks, whites, that this is a really, really refreshing color to see on a car like this. And again, I'm sorry, it's been so overcast here in January. You don't really get to see the true brilliance of this color, but trust me when I say, it's pretty doggone good. But with all of that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts. I'm a big, big fan of this car. I'm a big fan of this chassis. It kind of does everything I really need a car to do. It's fun and engaging when you drive it. It has the V8, so you have the power right on tap when you want it. It's all wheel drive, so it's great in the winter. Throw some snow tires on it. You're gonna be unstoppable. It looks great. You know, it's an eye-catching car, especially for someone, quote unquote, in the know. If you know what the FX50 is, seeing one of these in traffic is very, very exciting. I like that about a car. I like feeling special. I like having a tight-knit owner's group, and that's definitely the case with the FX50. These cars come up for sale so rarely because most owners are holding on to them because they love them, they fall in love with them, and there was such a limited production run that it's not very often that they come up for sale. And so that's why I was so excited to show you guys this car. It really, really is a fantastic car. It's gonna be one of those greats that time is just going to forget. This car wasn't as popular as the Cayenne. This car wasn't as popular as the SRT8 Jeep. This car wasn't as popular as almost any of its competitors, but it's still so good. And that to me was worth a reshoot of the video. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.